awesome, absolutely awesome. I love it when the plan comes together. Definitely worth a look. The, um, yeah, it was well on par. Hello everybody, so I'm back and um, time for a spoiler field review of Man of Steel. Um, just, just been looking at more and more comments and reviews from other people. Um, it's still, I can understand why there are so many people who are not happy with what they have seen from the movie. Um, you know, they think Henry Cavill isn't 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 Superman. He doesn't embody the character as well as what Christopher Reeve did. Um, the action was too too fast paced. It was too loud. Um, they didn't think Amy Adams played a really good Lois. Um, they felt Zod was uh, you know. He wasn't General Zod. Uh, it's just there was so many things that so many people are saying that they didn't like about the film. Now, what I'm going to say right now, off off the bat, is this: if you're going to be stuck in the past, then stay there. Don't bother go and see this movie and then compare it to Richard Donner and Christopher Reeve's versions or the George Reeves TV series. Don't because. When this movie was being made, Zack himself even said at Comic-Con that this movie isn't going to be based on anything that's been done, that's been done previously. Okay, Where they've taken all the inspiration from the mo for this movie is from the comics, which is where Superman came from. That was his first origin. That's where he was you know, created. Um, you know, people who are still stuck with the 1978 film, fine. If you want to be stuck in that, in that time, frame then just watch the night the, the Superman movie and watch Superman 2 afterwards and if you want to then watch Superman Returns after that by all means do that okay because that's why those films are done in that in that vision what Zack Nolan and uh, Goya have done is reimagine Superman in a way that I never thought possible and I think many other people will agree um, that they have brought the movie to the 21st century and are going to take it further okay what we saw in this movie isn't the complete story, okay? It is the, the, the beginning. It is the start of Kal-El as, you know, an alien on Earth, um, finding himself, realizing what, what potential he has. Um, can he trust the humans? That was that was one of the one of his other, other issues, you know, when he was in, in the church talking to the, uh, to, to the priest. And uh, the priest basically said, you know, what you've got to do, first of all, is take a leap of faith and then decide on who you're going to trust on from there. Um, when he surrendered to the uh, to, 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 to the military, um, you know, it was his way of saying, look, I'm not here to cause any problems for you guys. You know, I can see, I know that Zod is, is, is asking for me. If you want to surrender me to him, by all means do that. But here's my condition. And his condition was that he wanted to speak to Lois. Um, Going back all all through everything that's happened in the film, I mean, I look back and I, I say to myself, I'm like, because it was so inspired from all the comic books, that it was literally a comic book movie. You had Earth One, Birthright, those two were very notable in the movie. Red Sun was hinted in there, All-Star Superman was also hinted in there, even Superman Brainiac, the bit where um, Superman's fighting Zod in, in Smallville and, you know, his helmet gets a bit messed up, so when he takes it off, He's seeing, you know, his, his X-ray vision is all over the place, and his uh, his hearing, he's hearing everything all at once. And if you watch Superman Brainiac, and if you read the, well Superman Unbound, and if you've read Superman Brainiac, that's exactly what he does to Brainiac, because Brainiac is always stuck in his ship. When he comes down to Earth, he's suddenly realizing that, you know, he can't actually handle life on Earth. You know, everything that surrounds him. You know. Um, and I remember even when watching it and how Martha was telling Clark that when he was a baby he struggled to breathe um, when he was when he was young, which which I love that angle. Because there's no kryptonite in this movie, I love the angle that he arrives to Earth and it takes him a while to adapt to their atmosphere. Because when Zod arrives, you know, him and his crew, they're all they're all dressed in their metal garbs and stuff. Um, in their outer sort of armor wear, but at the same time, when they when they're on Earth, they've got their helmets on. So when they go on the ship, and when Superman and Lois are going on are on, are on the ship, you hear Feyora say that you know our ship is not designed for uh, its atmosphere is it's, it's not it's not suitable for humans. You'll need to wear this uh, protective helmet. Okay, and I'm thinking, well, what about Superman? 
I mean, he's been on Earth for a long time. Will it not affect him? And sure enough, he gets on a ship and it does affect him because he has been on Earth for a long time. He has adapted to their atmosphere. So the Kryptonian atmosphere is totally different to that of Earth. Um, even the uh, the Jarrell artificial uh, hologram telling Kalel is that you know he, he he's asking Jarrell why am I so different to everybody else you know what makes me so powerful he tells him the sun is younger um, again that's a reference to uh, red sun the sun is younger the atmosphere is more rich um, you, 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 your your body's taking in all, all the sun's radiation you become more stronger you know you 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 are very powerful but how powerful can you be depends on yourself you know test your limits and that's what he does he does test his limits as Zach said we actually see his superpowers as, as raw power they are raw it's not like as if he's just taken to it naturally I mean you saw him when he was when he was a kid in school he just could not focus properly on his sight and his hearing was all over the place um, the heat vision love the heat vision by the way um, it was just all over the place for his sight and his hearing and it's a case of getting a handle on that and that's where his parents came in um, you know Jonathan and Martha I love the flashbacks because the flashbacks were related to what was occurring in present day you know he's he's looking at the uh, the school bus for example after he saved the the men on the oil rig um, and then he gets a flashback to when to when he was at school and the bus incident um, you know t telling Lois um, what, what Jonathan, you know, that his father believed that if the world found out who he really was, you know, they would reject him. The tornado scene then came up and that was, that was a very, very poignant moment in, in the film because Jonathan did not want Clark to expose himself to everybody. You know, Clark wanted to save him, but Jonathan said, no, you know, just not now, you're not ready. As far as Jonathan Kent was concerned, he protected Clark from, not just from the world but from himself as well because he was afraid of what people would think of him and sure enough when he got older put on the suit people did start to you know they were looking and thinking whoa who is this person where has he come from in Superman the movie we didn't get that you know it's the case of here's a super powered being and everybody loves him but that was that was like then this is now, we're talking about post 9-11, people are going to be suspicious, people are going to look at someone and think, what is, what is his, what, what is his um, reason for being here, What's, what, what is his actions, what is his intentions, you know, are they good, are they bad, can we trust this person, should we trust this person, can this person trust us, should we fear this person because of the things that he can do, that's the message that's being, you know, portrayed in this film is, he is an alien, he is from another world, how will we react in a real world environment? Because it is a real world environment that they put him in, that's exactly what they've done. You think, you know, the world that you live in, if, if a superpower alien appeared, what would your reaction be? Would you want to just run up to him and give him a hug? No, you would actually fear him to begin with. You would be like, okay, there's, there's something not right about this guy that I don't trust. But until his actions have been justified, then you can say, actually, yeah, he is here to save us. He is here to look after us. Yes, the, the, the S symbol does mean hope. People saying, oh, well, if it means hope, why was he flying around and crashing buildings and this, that, and the other? Well, he's fighting Zod. And Zod was there to, to create destruction. Not, not to create destruction. Zod wanted to build a new Krypton on planet Earth. And I love what jor did with the Codex, by the way fusing it with Kal-El's body therefore he now inhabits Kryptonian beings inside his body now if they play that in the sequel it'll be interesting to see how that how that comes about if somehow the DNA from his body gets extracted or the Kryptonians are extracted somehow it'll be interesting to see how that how that unfolds um, you know it's it is it is so amazing that Again, I've got to go back to Lois, her investigating reporters, you know, she, she, she is a journalist as well as, as well as a reporter. I mean, she's already established herself as a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, she says. Um, but she goes, she goes seeking, she goes out looking for this super-powered being, this, this guardian, this ghost that people have been talking about. 
and it tracks back. She pretty much starts from the from the present instant, from when she was on the ship, okay, going all the way back, tracing it back to Martha Kent. Now, it does beg the question: Well, if if Lois can do that, doesn't anyone else can do it? But is anybody else really bothered about where he where he's staying? Well, yeah, they are because the military eventually started assigning drones to find out where Superman is hanging his cape, as he says to uh, to um, General Swanwick at, towards the end there, um, where he brings down a drone that's, that's, that's actually keeping an eye on him, um, you know, and he does say to, 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 to the general that he is here to help, but it's got to be on his own terms, you know, not when the military feel it is, you know, on their, on their terms kind of thing. Um, what else have we got? I mean, again, the effects, the action sequences. I mean, I've seen people complain that the first 45 minutes of where he's flying around and stuff, like, I don't, the, the shakiness added to the effect. It was as if you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, I'm trying to keep up with this guy. He's moving too fast for me to keep up with him. Where, where is he? Try and focus. Just that, that added to it. That added to the fun of seeing him fly, the sonic booms, the extra power he was giving himself, you know, when he thought he was going really fast, and then you thought, no, he can do it, he can get some more, and he does. And it was so very comic book-like, and even animated TV series, like Superman the Animated Series as well, so comic book and animated, like, just seeing him fly up and then boom, off he goes in the sonic boom movement. It was just superb to see that happen. Um, you know, as I say, I've read so many comics, and people complaining, oh, it's too loud, it's this, it's that. I mean, when, when Zack was announced as director, the first thing everyone said was, oh my God, he's going to put everything slow-mo, he's going to do this, we're going to see slow punches and everything. To be honest, I actually thought, I wish we had seen some slow punches because it would have been awesome just to see the proper impact of the, of the, of the um, you know, of, of like the punches and the, and the hits and stuff between Superman and Zod and Feora. But again, Having it fast paced was brilliant. I mean, look how fast they showed Feora moving, for example. Beating up the soldiers, she was just, it was just so fluid. It was incredible. It was brilliant. I loved just seeing that happen. It was immense, absolutely fantastic. Um, but I think the biggest talking point is obviously Superman snapping Zod's neck. That really did pull a lot of people's strings because it was like, Whoa, Superman just killed someone. But it's not a case that he killed someone on a whim. He was trying to stop Zod from killing that family. He wasn't going to accept watching Zod kill that family. Because he knows because Zod now knows that his weakness is the compassion for humans. That kryptonite, as we said, is not in this movie, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any other weaknesses. And the other weakness being his compassion for humans. Okay? Um, it was just so, and it hurt Superman. You felt you felt the pain because he screamed afterwards when he realised what he had done. And I hope that gets played on in the sequel. But what you've then got to look at, if you look at the rest of the film leading up to that point of where he snapped his neck when he was a kid getting bullied, um, and he couldn't fight back because he knew what would happen if he did. And even Jonathan was saying no. There was the, the, there was a flashback where he was being bullied by Whitney Fordham and um, and, and and other kids, and his dad basically said, you know, are you all right? Uh, did they did they hurt you? And he went, well, you know, they can't. And he said, well, that's not what I meant. Are you all right? As in emotionally. You know, it's the emotional side of things that he bottled up as a kid, took it into his teen years, um, you know, to the point of where. Even after Jonathan died in the tornado incident, again, that was inside of him. That rage, that emotion, that hurt, the, the feeling that he was helpless, that as much as he wanted to save his dad, he couldn't. And there's this family of four about to get, you know, inflamed by Zod's heat vision. And he thought, well, yes, he could have flown them out of there, he could have done something else. But I think it was the realisation that everything that led up to that point all that built up anger and rage and hurt from, from losing his dad, being bullied as a kid, it just all came out. And then when he realised what happened, that's when he let out that scream as if to say, 
oh my god, this is going to haunt me for a long time. And it will. And as I say, I hope in the sequel it, that, you know, they use that as, as a tentpole of some sort, you know, as a benchmark kind of thing. It's to keep referring back to what happened to that moment and just use it as, 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 as something in the movie, you know, some sort of bribe, you know. I mean, I say a bribe, and by bribe I mean Lex Luthor, okay. There was so much Lex Corp um, stuff around around Metropolis. It was not hard to see it. It was not hard to miss, I tell you. You could just see it. Even in, when he gets dropped off at Smallville, when he's coming back home, he's he got hit, he took a hitchhike on a Lex Corp truck, for heaven's sake. So Lex's presence is well known. Um, and I hope we do see Lex in the, in, in the sequel, um, because it's known. He, he's there. He's somewhere there in that world. Um... And he won't be happy with what two super, you know, what a group of aliens have done to the to, to, to the planet, especially Metropolis. And that is where you're going to get the Lex Luthor that we've been waiting for. He is going to say to the humans, "Look, what we have here is a, is an alien who is not who has no good intention for us. He's not here to save us. This is what his intentions are. I mean, and he will. And again, that's where you want to use the uh, the snapping of Zod's neck." as a bribe in some way to blackmail not just Superman but to put doubt and fear into the into into the humans. You know, Lois was there when she saw him snap his neck. So Lois already knows what it, what he what was going through his mind after he did that. And I love the angle that they're using that Lois knows who he is. Because at the end, when Clark eventually starts working at Daily Planet and you know he's got the glasses on. I did say I, I was hoping it was going to be at the end and it was at the end that he put on the glasses. And when Perry introduces him to both Steve Lombard and Lois Lane, you see Lois' face just glow, just lights up. And she was like, hi, I'm Lois Lane. Welcome to the planet. Not welcome to the daily planet, welcome to the planet. So, again, just, it rounded off really well. I thought it was was good. It was It ended up very, very well. It's a shame that there was no post-ending credits or anything like that. I would have loved to have seen a post-ending credit. You know, they could have used Lex looking at the destruction of Metropolis from his office, you know, in his building, just looking and thinking, I'm going to make that Kryptonian pay. You know? <laughs> I'm going to bring him to his knees, basically. That's, that's what I would have loved to have seen. Um, but yeah, as I say, overall... I really did enjoy it. I th it was fantastic. I thought it was phenomenal. You know, I'm not stuck in the past because I'm moving forward. This is this is what 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 I've been expecting. This is what I've been waiting for. A Superman that is real, is based on a real real world situation. How would people react seeing such a superpowered being? Um, you know, and what 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 does he want to do for us? Why why is he here? You know. Um, there was, there's still so much more I want to talk about, so again, I just wanted just to give out this quick, so I say quick, <laughs> but it is a long review. But um, as as the days goes on, as the week goes on, I will be doing more and more in-depth discussion. You know, I do want to talk more about more about the Kryptonians. I mean, now I know who M Mackenzie Gray's character is, Jack Sir, um, Jenny, who was never actually called Jenny Olsen, but she was just known as Jenny. Um, so we don't know if she is an Olsen. We know that she's an intern because it gets mentioned at the end, um, but she's not Jenny Olsen. She doesn't get called called Olsen. Um, talk a bit more about the military, um, the teasers for the DC Universe, Guardian, Trident, Wayne Enterprises, Satellite. Um, I want to discuss a bit more about um, Krypton as well. I know I haven't spoken about Krypton in this in this particular video, so more and more videos to come because there's so much more I want to talk about it's just there's so much in-depth analysis I want to do about this film it's amazing um, so yeah anyway as I say thank you all for watching <laughs> if you've managed to stick this long watching this review good on you um, if you haven't I understand um, but uh, no seriously there is still more to come so anyway thank you very much and I'll see you all later bye